16th, 2020, 7.30 p.m., and I call this meeting of the Needham Design Review Board to order. <clears throat> I'm Mark Lusing, the board chair. I'd like to confirm that all members and applicants expected on the agenda are present and can hear me. So members, when I call your name, please respond. Robert Dermody. Here. Deborah Robinson. Here. Steve Tanner. Here. Not yet. Okay. Uh, also attending our town staff support, Ron Amana Dorfer and Elisa Lichman. Um, I'll call out the applicants uh, by business and address, and if someone would respond with your name that you are participating for them. We have a special permit hearing for Petco, 163 Highland Avenue. Present, Philip from Harvey Signs. Okay, how Phil. Uh, we have awning change and signage for Elite Aesthetics, 1 Chapel Street. President, I'm Brian from Acme Sign Company. And I'm the owner, Joelle Lehman at Elite Aesthetics. Okay, and we have signage at Needham High School, 609 Webster Street. Aaron Seacott, Principal of Needham High School. Okay, thank you. Uh, so I have a brief introduction. Uh, welcome to this open meeting of the Needham Design Review Board, which is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. We have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend all public gatherings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law that all meetings in a public meet in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. For this meeting, the Needham Design Review Board is convening by Zoom app as posted on the town's website and DRV uh, webpage identifying how the public may join. DRB meetings typically do not require allowing public comment, although we do have a special permit application tonight and we, we will take a moment to see if there's any comment from the public. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other people may be able to see you and that take care not to screen share your computer unless I've cleared it with you. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. Please remember to mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking, and please speak clearly in a way that helps generate accurate record. All supporting materials that have been provided to the members of this board are available on the town's website. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless I know it otherwise. I'd like to review the procedures for tonight's meeting. I will introduce each applicant on the agenda after they conclude their remarks, I will take comments or questions from design review board members. After the discussion, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call vote. The building department requires electronic submission of building permit applications. So a copy of the application stamped and noted for the type of approval that you receive will be emailed to you by the DRB support staff. That can then be attached to your building permit application. We will start with the first item on the agenda, which is the public hearing for a special permit for Petco located at 163 Highland Avenue. So why don't you go ahead. Good evening, Mark, how are you tonight? So we are uh, going on second um, meeting for this. We addressed the issues the first time, had some requests and some questions and we um, tried to make some changes. Um, unfortunately, they just were not conducive to what Petco was um, requesting. Um, one of the changes was that the Vetco total care letters be partially reduced so that the word Vetco was more prominent than the word total care. Um, upon further um, conversations with Petco and Vetco themselves, that is their actual trademark logo. So they're requesting that that not be changed. Um, as that is their branding image. Um, and the note was the pylon sign was to have a new face installed um, so that there'd be no yellowing or ghosting shadowing from the previous face. Um, that is going to be um, 
a new face on both sides of that pylon sign. Um, and then the third issue was the flat cutout letters that were illuminated on the column by the goosenecks. Um, after the meeting, when I brought that up to the client, I guess it was brought back to my attention that at the first um, design review for the project, it was, uh, it was approved for them to have electrical out there for that. So I guess we're kind of, you know, on the fence about whether it was approved back then because they re they ran the electrical for it, but now they're saying we can't have the letters on the column. So I guess there's some some clarification that needs to be brought up on that subject. Yeah, typically we would, uh, if that was the approval for the actual building itself, if that's what they're talking about, we never approve signage within a, a, a building site plan review application. That's probably what that process was at the time. Okay. So they may have talked about it, but we said we would look at the signage when they came back with a signage application. Okay. I, you know, I mean, if they can pull up a file that says that signs approved, that's fine. But I don't really have easy access to our records, but we can try and do a little more research on that ourselves. But uh, as, a, as standard practice, we would not have approved signs there we may have said if you want to put lights in someday we can they can consider it but okay. um so that at this point i would have to say i disagree with their understanding okay so do we have um a, a second option for that or well, well we're going to go through again you know this is the the real public hearing we've been informally discussing this with you okay we'll go through the package that you submitted and make decisions ask questions and we'll come to a determination at the at the conclusion Okay. Okay. Thanks. Good. So why don't we start with the Vetco Total Care wall sign? Sure. The main building sign. Um, is Steve on yet? No, Steve's not on. So Deborah, do you wanna do you have any questions, comments on the, the one that's mounted on the wall? Right. I mean, I, I didn't have any problem with the Vetco sort of the size of the letters, if that's their, um, you know, that's their logo. Um, I don't recall what we said about that lettering on the wall, in addition to the main Petco sign in the center. The, the notes that I have from the first meeting, um, a couple of the issues that, well, not issues, but comments that were made was, um, that it wasn't at the same elevation height as the actual storefront, but we decided that because of the red banding, it wasn't possible to raise it because then it wouldn't look aesthetically pleasing in that striped area. Yeah, yeah no, I think centered in the band um, is the place it can go. Um, you know, I guess it's a matter of just the number of the signs. Um, if that's an extra one and the size of it, um, I don't know what anybody else, anybody else is uh, offended by it. Well, that's, you know, it's a special permit. That's why he's here because it is an extra sign uh, beyond the, the main Petco and the pylon sign, so. Yeah, I mean, where it's, you know, I think the, the size of the font small enough relative to the main one that it's definitely, um, you know, secondary and not competing with it. And I think if it, it really is part of their place that it's sort of the second sort of sub business thing, the way it is on the, the, the pylon sign, I mean, I, I don't object to it. Okay, uh, Bob. Yeah, I, I um, don't believe I was involved in the first meeting on this one, but I can certainly weigh in with what's being presented this evening. And just for clarification, Mark, the we'll talk about Vetco Total Care first. And is that uh, yes. that's a special per, a special application sign? All all of them are. They're okay. all part, they all require special permits. Right, okay. Um, I think the Vetco Total Care looks okay there. My first impression looking at it in the, the way it's presented in the 
image on page six of our documents, um, the front elevation, I just, I think it could be a little smaller. Um, and not changing anything else, but just sort of scale it down in total. So in other words, to give a little more breathing room between the top of the T and the red band. Uh, now I know this is probably a Photoshopped image on top of a photo. So it's not always completely accurate, but maybe I could ask the uh, opponent, Philip there, do we have an idea of the height of that gray band? In other words, how much space would be above the letter T in Vetco? Um, let me look through the drawings. I believe um, I don't. So there, on page four, there are some dimensions. Right? Yeah, the the elevation of the letters combined is forty two and a half inches, and the overall of the gray is forty eight. Okay. 42 to 48, that's five and a half left over. So two and a quarter top and bottom. Yeah, that's tight in my opinion. Uh, so I think color is fine. I, I think it's a clean sign. That's one thing I think it's good. It's very clear, There's nothing else going on with it. So Vetco Total Care is legible, but I just, and it's a minor point. I don't know what my colleagues think. Um, What's the square footage of that sign? Um, that one is 30, uh, 35.71. Right. And, and the only objection I would have to that is where the sign is mounted on the secondary surface set back from the main entrance and further back from the road. I, I think, you know, a, a little bit larger sign, you know, or the size we're proposing would, you know, help visibility at night. And the smaller we make it, the, the harder it's going to be to see. Uh, perhaps. Uh, is it illuminated in any way? Internally illuminated with LEDs. Okay, then it will be visible, especially at night. Um, and I think at a distance, smaller is better because it's not going to bleed into the band above it. So I, I don't know what my colleagues think. I could probably be convinced to leave it as is, but that's my opinion. I think it should be a little smaller or if you can, I don't know how much you have between Betco and Total Care, if you can maybe crunch that a little just to, you know, and maybe I'm splitting the hairs here, but that's my thought. Well, I think the space between the two lines is part of the, what the logo is. So I think Bob like scaling it. Yep. So scaling it, you know, and I think a little bit as I agree with what you're saying about the top and the bottom and, um, you know, so maybe getting it down under the 32 would be enough to make the difference. The 30, 32 square feet. This is Mike with Anchor Sign. May I step in? I'm the national account manager for Petco okay. for the National Sign Company. I work with Phil. Um, Phil, what's the what's the actual letter height? The letter height of the V is only 15 inches. 15 inches. So the letters, I mean, the letter themselves, because the stacked letter set is why it adds up to 42 with you know, you're talking upper and lowercase letters that makes a significant impact on the overall height of how you get up to 42. But you're talking a 15 inch letter set, which is, you know, in perspective, you can come up with what, how big 15 inches is. So these are not very big letters at all. Um, physically, letters do get slightly smaller than this. However, this is cutting it down to about as small as channel letters can get. You, channel letters can get maybe down 14 inches is definitely standard, you know, down to 12, but anyways. Well, well I would- It's not I would, a very big letter set. We've but. done very small letters. So I, you know, it all yep. depends. Um, you know, Steve Tanner is not here, but he's a sign manufacturer, and, but we've done- Understand. Eight inch letters, we've done narrower strokes. I mean, there were yes, a sir. variety of ways to do that. Um, so- But, but we can I, certainly- I agree, the 15 inches is like. not, 15 inches is not, a, a, I mean, it's it's not small, but it's not a big sign either. Uh, if, if the board members will recall our last meeting where we had the Century Bank limit their capital letter to 15 inches and the Citizens Bank image is 15 inches. We did do some, so we've recently seen a 15 inch letter. Um, it is a little bit crowded in the in within the architectural space, which is what our concern is. 
but uh, I'm less concerned that it's going to help much because of the height of the sign. Basically, as you look up at it, you're not going to be able to see what kind of space is on that top line, except maybe from the road. But at that point, yeah, you're moving faster. You know, so this, so this again, the pace of viewing. Um, I'm more comfortable with it, even though it's a little bit more. We would usually look for maybe four inches of negative space on the top and bottom instead of two and a half. Good so, point, Mark. Yep. So, but I, you know, again, it's not a large sign. I'm, I'm, real, I'm comfortable with this one. Um, we, we spent a lot of time in our earlier discussions with Phil uh, reviewing just the design of that logo. And uh, there, were, there were a couple other members uh, that were in attendance at the time. And I agreed, we didn't find it to be a very interesting imagery, but that's uh, that's not our decision to make. We can advise, suggest, and, and recommend ideas, but if that's what you want to use, that's what you're going to use. So I'm comfortable with it, but Bob, if you want to shrink it down to 38 inches overall, we can look at doing no, it. I think you brought up a good point that made me think too that, yeah, it's so high up. That, that you'd have to be way high up to see that negative space anyways, even if it was bigger. So I, I think I can live with it as is. Um, okay. And I do appreciate that it's 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 clean, you know, it's, it's clear. Yep. And I think that's something we try to strive for is clarity. So uh, it has that going for it. Well, I do have to say, Phil, at the uh, earlier, remember we had asked you if that door had been filled in yet or not. And, and it hadn't been. And then yeah, when I was, with the next time out. I was over in that area, I'm like, oh, yeah, they filled it in. Yeah, <laughs> so, I know. <laughs> they used a different color masonry, but that wasn't wasn't the they can probably rub some dirt on it and get them to gray out a little more. <laughs> yeah. You know. Um, so uh, I think we're OK there. Any other comments, Deborah? Bob? No. No, I, that I think one. we're good. And the it's they're not, not just white, uh, they're not white letters, so we don't really have to worry about the thing we talk about yeah. often about the brightness. So that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do we want to go ahead and vote on this one now and get it out of the way, or yeah, I'll uh, make a motion that we uh, approve. What do we have a number for this sign or a name for this sign? Well, this is sign A, I believe. Okay, correct. Sign right, A yeah, in the package. Sign a. So I, I move to approve sign A as presented. All right, so the vote is uh, Bob Dermody? Aye. Deborah Robinson? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Okay, no, no one officially seconded, but I'll put down Deborah as the second. a right. girl right now. <laughs> I think you're gonna have to. That was too quick on the trigger there. Keeping an eye on us. So the next one I'd like to discuss is the pylon sign. If we can take a look at that. Uh, what letter would that be? Uh, that's, that's sign, sign C. C. Thank you. It's actually, if you scroll through the package, it's two. It's the I'm skipping the one on the. Yep. On the pillar. Page eleven. Got it. Thank you. So that's that's going to be the one we have to figure out. So. Uh, okay, Phil, you want to give us a quick? You you filled us in already. It's a they're going to replace the panel initially. There was going to be some. Correct. There was the, the panel that's there existing now will be removed and a brand new panel will be installed, you know, to look like what we're proposing here. Okay, our fear with all of these is uh, as well, I'll let Bob start on and he can talk about the issue. Yeah, so and again, acknowledging the fact that we all have different resolutions and you know, one computers, uh, but we take white to mean white. And that's one of our concerns around town, especially at night when it's such a large field of whiteness, granted with letters in it, but uh, the brightness of that. So that's something we often work with the proponents on is toning that down a little, um, sort of maybe putting a film on the back or something. Um, and just compare it to the staples above, and certainly that's an older sign. Um, so that would uh, be another indication. Uh, I find this sign crowded as well, um, like I did the other one, but uh, it's still clear, you know, so that's a good thing. That's what I got for now. Okay. Deborah? Yeah, no, I mean, I think I'm okay with it, with this, the size of it. Okay. Uh, all right. Here's a super mini question for you, Phil. Yes, uh, sir. Very specific. The black vertical line. Yes. 
where will that begin and end? That will, so the panel, as I'm sure you're aware, the panel slides in to the track, which we call the retainers. So it sits inside the bottom about an inch and a half, and it looks like it sits in that intermediate bar, roughly five eighths of an inch. That black stripe will be the whole width of the panel itself prior to me installing it. Yep. Okay. How wide so is that stripe? Um, one inch. Yeah, that's. It, I think this is the issue with the rendering. It looks much fatter in the photo rendering. Uh, one inch from you know Highland Ave is going to look tiny, which is good. I think. I think that's cleaner. So thanks. No problem. So Phil, could you talk about the illumination? What's so, going to do? So the 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 panel, the option that we're proposing is that it's a three sixteenths white Lexan panel with. Um, with applied graphics, um, the red and then the blue and then the black as an outline, um, as a as a you know an outline around the red and the blue. One option, and Mike can chime in if he wants on this, is um, if you're concerned about the brightness, um, a, a digital print could be done where we can put um, white vinyl onto the white plastic, which in some cases will dull it down a little bit, but in other cases it basically just blacks it out in some senses, depending on how bright that sign is. I'm not sure what the components are. If that's got older T12 fluorescent lamps, it may not be as bright as it would be as if it was brand new with, you know, high efficiency LEDs. Um, so that that could be, you know, a situation where we run into it being too dark and we don't get the illumination we are looking for. Uh, yeah, that was my question. What is the light source? So if you're not sure, that's um, a pretty old sign. It's not likely to have LED lighting in it, correct? No, more, more than likely it's got, um, you know, fluorescence, um, probably a single row. It, it looks like it's only probably about a foot wide. Um, so I would think that it's just got, you know, standard T8, uh, T12 t lamps in it. Well, it's a 30 inch panel, so it's pretty high. I mean, no, I'm saying the, de the depth of the box oh, okay. only being one inch or 12 inches wide would only indicate that there's a single row of lamps. Okay. Yeah, typically we ask for just a film on the back that would dim it. Uh, okay. And that's the comfort. I mean, I, I understand your concerns about it blacking out, but I we haven't found that that's ever been significant enough to. Do you guys uh, have a um, uh, like a respected nit value that you try to stick with that we can try to match or? Uh, no, we we give you some flexibility there to get. Okay. Yeah, again, we just want to make sure what the, we don't want to look is have this bright white lamp shining all night long. Understood. To the traffic. So that's brighter than, you know, you get a lot of glare, makes it hard to read. We can kind of get it in the realm of what the letters on the staples look like. You know, mm -hmm. maybe you can go out and just do a, a quick test on a couple pieces. Of, well, I think that the, um, the staple sign, more than likely that was at one point white Lexan with, um, you know, reverse cutout red. So the letters themselves were the white of the panel. Right. But now that they faded to yellow, um, anything we put in underneath is going to look substantially brighter yeah. right out the gate. Okay. But it's also just the letters as opposed to your whole background. Correct. And that's why I was suggesting if we did a full digital print, then it's 100% UV protected. And that white would never fade like the plastic above it. That white would stay white all the time. Okay. I, I like that solution. For my clarification and edification, Phil, what does a full digital print mean, please? So right now we're proposing it to be the panel is the white background and then the red and the blue are cut vinyl, which are applied first surface. Okay. A digital print would just be that, a big roll of white cast material, and then the images are printed to it digitally and then covered with a UV resistant laminate on top. Okay. So if let's say down the road, Petco changed to Pets Plus, essentially you could pull the letters off and put new letters on. With a digital print, the whole panel would have to be replaced. You have to peel it off. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Um, well, again, I agree with Bob. It's a little crowded, but not enough for me to start fussing with 10% reductions, in, in the, especially in that location. Uh, yeah. That's a high, that's all vehicle traffic. So. It's, it gets to be a little less of a, an issue for me again. Um, 
what do you all, what do the rest of the members think of the printing it on a sheet, a vinyl sheet, a vinyl sheet rather than just having in the Lexan be the white and using that as a way to control the brightness of the white background? It's, it's hard Mr. to. Chair. I'm sorry, Ms. Deborah, go ahead. No, oh, no, I was going to say it's, it's hard for me to just know based on that description. I mean, it sounds like maybe the overall sign is illuminated more equally rather than like the white being lit and the letters not being lit. Is that the case? Well, yeah, the letters are dark and the, uh, when the sign is white, the letters are just dark. You might, and I, I assume that the light goes through the letters as well. Correct. It's, it's, a, it's a translucent vinyl, so it does have some sort of, okay. you know, illumination to it. It's not opaque. Okay. What, which method would uh, give us a better result for avoiding bright, bright white? Um, the, the digital print would, um, you know, I don't want to say significantly, but it would um, consistently reduce the visibility or the, the brightness of the panel. Um, and it would also reduce any chance of it yellowing as the panel above it did. Um, then I would go for that one. That sounds, sounds better. I, I, personally, in my opinion, I think they look better and they last longer. Um, and it just it, overall, but I'm just the installer. You know, Peco makes that decision at the end of the day. <laughs> I like it when people say it looks better and lasts longer. So that that's that would be my choice. Mr. Chair, uh, this is Joel Moore. Thank you for signing, if I may. Um, yes. So I, I just looked up the survey, and these these are just uh, standard lamps. They're not LED, so I don't believe the, the brightness of the light shining through will be an issue. Well, uh, how many are in there? If it's, There's one thing if it's two lamps. There's another thing if it's six lamps. Do we know? The sign. Correct. It, I, I was just going. I was just going by the, the fact that it's not LEDs and LEDs are, are brighter. Yeah. And I apologize. I got my no, seven month old daughter chiming in as well. <laughs> that's okay. The um the sign's 168 inches wide, so that puts it at 14 feet. Typically, you'd have a lamp every foot on center, so there'd be 14 lamps in that if they were going um vertically. Yeah, and I think Mark, we've even done this with with old lamps as well uh, you know i think we've requested from proponents to have a filming you know a film on the back even with the older lamps so yes uh, yeah i i i would i think you know prefer the method of uh, the sheet vinyl with digital print so that we have some control over that this is just going to be a glaring change from the existing yellowed staple sign and the other sign below so that uh, would give it some consistency, I think, going forward. This is Mike with Anchor Sign. Uh, we have yep. no problem with either of those methods. If, if you're, whichever you prefer, we have no problem with either either of those. All right. So I would uh, take a motion to approve this uh, with the change being in the specifications that it not be uh, an app vinyl applique on the Lexan panel, but it be changed to a digital print vinyl sheet. Is that so move, Jeff? Rana got that. <laughs> Deborah, you have to second because you're okay, the only one here. All right, uh, and we vote. Uh, Robert Dermody, aye. Deborah Robinson, aye. And the chair votes aye. Okay, thank you. And thanks for your help on that, Mike and Phil. That's big. And the, the third application is for signage on the and lighting on the pillar at the entrance to the store. And you can look at that on that first sheet with the overall building sign also. All right, Phil, you want to tell us a little bit about the scale of this and the size and the installation? So what we're proposing is um, a set of what we call FCO, flat cutout letters. Um, they total in square footage to 16 and a half square feet. Um, they are roughly six and three eighths tall individually. Um, and we're 
you know, asking that they be um, externally illuminated with uh, gooseneck lights, um, more than likely with um, some sort of high efficiency LED um, bulb. Um, we are, we did remove, or the grooming sign over the door that was removed has been removed. Um, so we're trying to keep some sort of branding on the building to identify that grooming dog training, you know, is still part of their business. We don't want the public to think that now that it says Vetco, that those other services have been, you know, uh, taken away. And obviously the columns out front are the most prominent and the more most direct way to get visibility. This is Mike, if I can add to that, uh, this with the columns, the way they're standard there, that's a standard look for uh, Petco signage. So um, with the those on the columns there in the FCO letters, so that's a standard uh, branded look they like. So all of their stores have a pillar entrance like that? Whenever they can, they prefer. <laughs> um, no, each store is unique, as you know. Okay. But uh, yes, as far as the FCO letters off center to the left of the door, um, in the sort of the, the foremost area that they can get them. Whenever they do have pillars, that's where they prefer to put them. Okay. Yeah, I guess one of my concerns, as we looked at it the first time, is that there are four pillars on that building, two at Staples where they've changed the color, and then the two here. So it's a it starts to throw the whole architectural cadence of the place into, uh, into a different balance. So that's kind of why we wanted to take a close look at this. So Deborah, do you wanna, do you have any questions or comments? I, mean, I think it's a lot of wording that I personally don't think is necessary to, I think people know what Petco is. And now we've got the Vetco there as well. I mean, it seems like it's, um, a little overkill to need those letters on the building rather than just something smaller that's just like at the on the window say or on the door or something that isn't so much of a sign did we say that the last time uh, or did i believe we say we did. it was okay are we completely off the table with them being on the columns is is that just the in my opinion, yes. The game changer. Because we could we split could we split them into both columns somehow so we have equal balance? Yeah. The problem maybe, is that, that our bylaw is not really about advertising services. It's identifying a business in the location. And you know, there's some leeway in there if you have a generic name. Uh, I always use the example there was a, a children's clothing store in Needham Center called Polywag. Well, you see that son name, you don't really know what that is. So it does say. We, always, we did let them say children's clothing or some simple explanation, but this is really just, you know, this starts to fall to us sort of into just a promotional kind of signage uh, that we tend not to approve unless it's really clear that there's some, that you'll be deficient if you don't have that. And um, and I, I really don't think architecturally it looks very good on the building to just th throw those three goosenecks up there and then put those that sign. Uh, and again, it's just it's just promoting the activities inside. It's not really about Petco, Vetco. Um, as we discussed before, if there's a way you can find to do something, you've got a lot of large windows behind it, you could do something back there or even back on the wall. But I, I, I'm a little uncomfortable having one column out of four with something like that on it when none of the other ones do. Right. Um, Mike, is there an option for some sort of graphic on the glazing above the door? I mean, that's dead center of the building. And that's yeah, we can we can look into out. drawing up a window signage of some kind. Uh, Maybe something second search. That consideration as well. Would the uh, would the chair accept that if we had some sort of interior glazing? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's part of part of the bylaw. You can have a sign. You are limited to twenty five percent of the area of the glass panel. So you sort of want to think that through carefully. But yeah, that's an allowed use. That's an allowed sign. So twenty twenty five percent of of the panel you're going on, or all the panels? Uh, the panel, technically, the panel you're going on. But I mean, you're looking at that whole. If you're doing it over that set of doors, you could use the set of door area over the set of doors. Okay. 
Yeah, I, I concur with you, Mark. Um, first off, the bottom line is completely redundant. You got vet care and vet whatever. So that's that's a non-starter for me. And then I do think this falls ex right into, you know, uh, this is advertising in my opinion. Um, it's not the name of the company. The name of the company is very clear. And that's why I made the comments I did earlier that your signs are very clear. They say the name and then you know, people know where they are. Um, by the time someone's going to be reading this sign, they're probably out of their car um, and they can see up and in, into the glass. So, and I, I agree with Mark's comments too about this building. Um, and I, this, yeah, so I would say no on this sign in this location. Okay. So I would accept a motion to deny the special permit for sign B. Uh, well, training and vet care. Since I'm Bob, I'll do sign B. Uh, I will say uh, I move to deny the sign B as uh, applied for on that pillar. Second. All right. Uh, the vote, uh, Bob Dermody. Aye. Well, then we, but, so we moved a negative. Is that what we did? Yeah. We All moved right. uh, Deborah Robinson. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Um, Mark, excuse me, point of clarification. Uh, do we, this is a public hearing. Did we ever, was there any public in the room anywhere? We will ask, is there uh, any public <laughs> in the room? In the Zoom? There are other people here. Do they have, if they have any questions or comments? There's one attendee who's not Clay. Yeah, that's, that's the other sign person. And the other one is the, Mr. Seacott, the principal at the high school. Well, that is correct, Mr. Chair. I'm, I'm called in on the cell phone. Okay, thank you. Um, so that's the three. So now in, Phil, in the packet, there was an image of the temporary banner, but there was no application for the temporary banner. Correct. Okay, so there's no temporary banner. Correct. So you're done? All right, so that's, okay. all right, so I think that's it for your special thank you. permit hearing. Yeah, thank thanks, you. guys. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Chair, thank you, Board. Pardon me? Okay. Thank right, you very next much. Time, next time on the agenda is uh, Elite Aesthetics, One Chapel Street. Yes, hi, Joel, and members of the board. My name's Brian. I'm from Acme Sign Company. And what our proposal is, is to recover the existing frames, the awning frames that are currently on the building, um, I believe they're blue, and we cover them in black, same size, same locations, um, with the additional uh, graphic on them would be uh, the, you know, pertinent to the layout and the drawing, um, which shows the Elite Aesthetics logo and some tagline copy too. Um, it's a unique building where, you know, it's almost got a round facade and you do see it coming from multiple directions. Um, each of the awnings serves a purpose in blocking out the light um, that would come from that, it's a south elevation. Uh, so it, it, these awnings are multi-purpose, you know, they're, they're not only for aesthetics, but they, they serve a function in allowing the uh, sunlight to be, you know, blocked from the windows. So these, these awnings have been up for many, many years and um, they're still in great shape. We looked at them, um, we, we determined that they're very reusable and that the, um, in order to keep with, uh, you know, cost efficiency and that it would be uh, the best bet for the, our customer to just recover them and use what's existing. So we're looking for an approval on that. And, um, uh, you know, any concerns or questions we're certainly open to listen to them. I, I don't see this being involved. It's a sort of a simple thing. Um, 
but it's, uh, you know, it's something that we do every, well, not every day, but we, we do quite a bit of these recovering of existing awning frames and it's, it's fairly simple. Okay, and uh, could you talk a little bit about the graphics, what they are, where they are? Uh, there's, there's notations on the document of the size, but it's not clear. It appears to me that the copy changes and I wanna kind of get an understanding of what that is trying to do and why. Sure, so, so in, in looking at the, uh, the sketch and drawings and layouts, um, you can see that you know, there are eight existing awnings that we'd like to do and most of them are gonna have the Elite Aesthetics logo on the downslope of the awning with the tagline. Now the tagline most often appears as just elite, but there are a couple of the awnings that one says science, um, you know, science led beauty. Uh, and this, so there's a couple, there's a couple different taglines um, and each of these can be seen to scale um, on the drawing that we submitted. Uh, do you know the size of the valence, Brian? I don't remember it from there. <laughs> you know, I do know it, but I don't have it with me. I believe, I believe it's nine inches. Okay. Uh, and it appears that the uh, there's one there's one the one awning at the entrance door has a larger logo and basically a more clear description of the business is, is that correct yeah there? and that's sort of meant to 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 indicate that yes this is our entrance and then the other awnings the are either just the simply the logo with elite on uh, justified to the right of each awning panel and then that looks like that the two awnings that face uh, the intersection the most, I guess, which are to the right of the, the entrance awning, have some sort of tagline. Are the, is that yeah, very clean and, uh, you know, simplified, small. Um, but Do you yeah. know how long the copy typically is? I sort of saw that as two and a half inches high, which isn't very high. Do you know roughly no, the length of the one No, but I think that, sort of... that two and a half inches is, is going to be all they need. Um, no, that's fine. I'm just trying know, to ascertain whether it's yeah. actually, there are some buy right things that you can do depending on the size. Sure. So I wanted to sure. figure that out. I like the way that it lays out nice and clean. You know, there's nothing, um, there's nothing overwhelming about it at all. And yeah. I think that the, um, the customer has, uh, has, has, you know, requested that this thing, and it looks really good in my opinion. Uh, and what about the existing illuminated cabinet signs? I don't know if that's there still. Joel, do you know? Have I'm going to weigh that? in. Hi, thank you for doing this tonight. Okay. Um, I'm going to weigh in on both of those. We don't know that they're functional. And because we try to be a uh, very elegant, sophisticated, minimalist, um, whether or not we want to utilize them if they are indeed functional is yet to to um, be a decision um, so i would probably do another um, request separately and first find out if they are indeed functional but we i just listened to what you said with petco the last thing i want is bright white lights and i really want more subdued and um, just to keep along the lines of our brand voice, which is more minimalistic and natural. I think digital may not be the way we wanna go, but of course we don't wanna be taking things off the building that we have to then fix. So I actually don't know the answer to that, whether they're functional or not at this time. Okay, well, cause it does- Would it be right that we're, we're really not asking for any type of, of decision based on the, uh, maybe existing illuminated wall sign at all, correct? 
Um, I would say yes with the caveat if they were functional and we kept with the same possible logo size appropriate could the could the committee give or the board give me um, an allowance for what that would look like because I've never checked if they were functional right how does the board feel about that well it's not it's certainly an option for you to use them but it okay. impacts how I feel about all that graphics and signage on the awnings so okay. that's why you know we view it as a total piece oh totally so that's yeah. So it's problematic to say, if we say we go ahead with the large awning at the entrance and we go ahead with these other pieces and then- So the, was, am I right in saying this was a real estate firm? It was a Caldwell Banker? Yeah. 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 The yeah one so, so was this approved in the past? Yes. It was. The one and thing about that, um, the, the awning, I'm sure all of you are familiar with the space, but the one thing about that awning over the main entrance is it's much smaller than the other awnings, number one. And number two, it's masked greatly by a huge tree right in front of it. So right. it's actually only visible from when you park in the parking lot. It is not visible at all from the street. Okay. Well, I'll let some of the other members chime in here. Bob, you wanna? Yes. Uh, so thanks for the presentation. Um, uh, I agree. I'm. I uh, don't know how we can really talk about these awnings without knowing the disposition of the signs above because it definitely influences what would go on this building because it's a total package. Ultimately, it's all, you know, the building. So uh, that's unfortunate, but I, I understand. Um, so a little clarification. Uh, there, were, there are eight awnings, I think, that was mentioned. So if we consider the one over the door sort of the one over the door that leaves seven others. Are all of those seven going to look the same? Yeah, and there's a drawing that shows shows the existing and the proposed for each one. But it's difficult to discern which is each one. I see one, well, the two, one, two, Three, four, five, six. Are, yeah. Bob, it appears to me that two of them uh, that really face the corner have the tag lines on them with the, the E on the right hand end. And all the rest are E and elite, right justified. Uh, so that's five of those and two with a little bit more wording. And then the main entrance sign. Yeah. I, 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 a single photo would have, would help uh, in addition to what you've provided that shows more of them together. You know what the issue I think is that they're all facing different directions. So it's impossible to get a flat photo of them. The two are facing the parking lot. And then um, I would say, if I'm remembering correctly, four or five go around the building and then the other two face another street. So I don't, other than a video of them as you go around them, I don't think there's any way to get an actual photo of all of them together because they face, am I, am I yeah, being no, clear? Understand. They face all different directions. Yeah, and they, and they have frontage on two streets and a parking lot. Yeah. No, they're, yeah, they're over, you can follow the overlap from yeah. the bottom right corner or a key plan or something would help. Um, but I think the gentleman, uh, was it Brian there? You did answer my question. So that's helpful that all the ones that are not the front door one will be the same. Okay. Uh, wait, no, that's I, correct. Uh, now I stand corrected. Well, I mean, not the same, but ultra similar. Well, the, that was my question though. So they're not the same. Um, so well, some, looking at the, you know, this this slightly different copy on them, like yeah. the, the awnings to the right. One says "Science Led Beauty," the other one says "Elite," and the other one says "Nature Based Wellness." I, I right. find that to start to be getting away from the uh, proponent's idea of simplicity. That's a lot of different words. So. I, I guess I'm concerned too about the disposition of the existing sign cabinets. Yeah, so that's uh, that's it. That's why I had, had said, you know, how does the board feel about that? And then 
and, and if this was permitted in the past, um, does that affect the board's decision now? Uh, no. If you have a proposal for those signs, you make the proposal. You're, the, those signs face two different streets. So that's why they're, they're allowed one right. sign per street face. One per street frontage, uh, sure. The, the th My, it, thing it, I can it, tell it, you about, I'm sorry. The thing I can tell you about that, that particular sign when it was Coldwell Banker is that they, they're not the same size. One, pan, one cabinet's longer than the other by a couple of feet. Correct. And their initial proposal made a bigger sign in the bigger cabinet and a smaller sign. But the reality is those signs are visible simultaneously 80% of the time as you view them going by. So what we at required them to do was make the sign is the same size and let the background vary. Right. And in the end, I thought that that was really quite successful. And we've done that on other right. applications with similar issues. So then, I mean, that'd be a great situation where uh, and I'm sure that my client would, would want this to be as clean looking as the awnings with a black background and only the um, small letters and logo that illuminate uh, in a white. So white graphic simplified such as the, the well, awnings are. We're not going to, we're not going to approve some discussion of a possible idea that you have for those, you know, you'll have to put something. Okay. Like yeah. Fair enough. Sure. So I'm going to let Deborah weigh in and see if she. Oh, so to just harp again on the cabinets because I think it really is what makes this facade. It would be nice, as you say, and simple with the black awnings. With you know whether we allow all that wording or not, but I think getting taking those cabinets off and is it is it two of them or three of them? Two. On the top right, it looks like maybe there was another one. There, yes, there is only two remaining. Two. Two of them, I mean, taking those off and if you need, if you're gonna submit for signage and having just individual letters on the brick would just really be be very nice rather than agree. cabinet sticking out. Um, yes, the truth is we don't like the cabinets and we've we felt that digital didn't really kind of go with our nature-based wellness theme. Um, so we weren't considering utilizing them. So, um, okay. You know, and that brick band with the, you know, with the, with the light stone, it is, is actually very nice. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you know, beyond, other than that issue, um, I mean, I think the black and the logo is, is fine. Yeah, I would be inclined to, if this is your, if this is your application, we can approve some version of the black awnings with the graphics. We have a little more discussion about the graphics and the amount of graphics before we're done. But I would want to, I would require that those cabinets then be removed. Okay. So if you're thinking you want to use them, you, we can continue you and you can reapply. No, no. I, in fact, okay. we ne never really thought about it. And, and Joelle's just pointed out that she doesn't like them. And, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, to remove them, I think would be a big step in helping this building look really nice. I agree. Okay, I guess, well, to me then, Bob, from the comments, uh, it's really a little bit about, um, basically is, I'm pretty familiar with that corner because I'm there a lot, because uh, mm -hmm. I go to Kinko's all the time for what's FedEx office now. <laughs> the, the main entrance awning and sign is sort of the, the identifier there. And then it's the first two to the right as you start to go around the corner that have additional graphics. Um, but there, it's a lot, it's a, you know, it may not be very tall, but it's pretty long. It's a lot, as you said, it's a lot of words. And then you get, then you turn and start to roll around the corner and you hit the simple elite name. And I'm comfortable with those awnings being repetitive, the uh, elite logo and then the word elite on the face of the awning on the on the fascia uh, so i don't yeah. know how the other members feel about uh, that aspect and how they feel about the more wordy the two more promotional sections which is really what they are i think the reason just as you weigh in i've been in needham now for six years with a very successful business hidden beside i'm on 78 chapel street hidden beside uh French press. And 
I'm extending and expanding my brand. So it's not just aesthetics. We will have a wellness center with more spa like uh, um, services. And I think the reason behind, um, although maybe it looks promotional is also to identify that this isn't the same elite aesthetics. It's now a bigger and more um, well-rounded spa and wellness center, which is why it gives those five intersections, those five streets, I've driven by it a million times now that I've leased the property, is very hard to visualize. You're, you, you drive by and you just see elite, but you don't really know what elite is. And so on those two right. awnings that are kind of centered, it gives you an indication of what this is. Okay. So beauty and wellness. And we didn't want to say things like waxing or massage or that seemed more promotional rather than an idea of what we actually are and what our brand is. Okay, Bob, what do you think? Um, thank you for those comments. Uh, I, I agree with you, Mark, some of the comments you had made earlier. Um, so I'm looking at the top right of the eight, draw, eight photos we have, the one that says science-led beauty. And then to the right of it would be an awning with just the word elite. And then the next awning around the corner appears in the photo below, am I correct? Then it, that would say the nature-based wellness? Correct. And then it would go elite, elite. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I will say again, um, I think this is clean and uh, an improvement. Um, but I have concerns about the disposition of the uh, the sign panel boxes. So if those were to go away, I think this would be a good solution. Uh, but that's not my decision. That is our uh, decision. That all is right. our decision. <laughs> all right, then get rid of it. There They're it gone. Is. They're gone. Done. Great. All right, so we're on the right track then. Um, but my uh, one counter comment, I guess, might be that, uh, and I appreciate your comments about your brand, but those letters are very small. And... As you know, from driving through that intersection, you really got to pay attention. <laughs> and elite will read, it's a simple, clean word, but trying to read the others is, you know, I'm not sure how much they will be actually be read. Oh, well, Bob, that's, I mean, there's, I'm an expert and there's scientific proof that it will be read. Um, what we're trying to do is is lay this thing out so it's clean and aesthetically good looking. Um, with the just with just an E with a circle around it, it says nothing. It's you know anybody who doesn't know what that business does needs assistance. So when you when you read the the copy down below that says you know medical spa, oh that's what you do. Wellness center. Okay, now I know I can't buy my cigarettes there. <laughs> it, it needs some, it needs additional tagline signage. And uh, I think that Joel's done a great job in making this nice and crisp, clean and small enough so that, you know what, you can read it from the street, but it's not obtrusive. It's not crazy large, super um, clean. I'm so sorry. I just need to interrupt very quickly. Miss Susan Henry. I just wanted you to know that Petco went first and their stuff has been approved slash dealt with. And I just didn't want you to sit through the rest of the meeting. Thank you. I realized after I got on, I forgot about the time zone difference. I'm so sorry, you guys. Thank you. No problem. I'm so sorry, Mr. Brinkers. I just didn't want the poor lady to sit with us. <laughs> Although that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. I'm so sorry. So, uh, you know, we're asking for the board to approve as is and, uh, you know, let's, well, I, you know, I think she made a, a good point about wanting to expand the thing. And I gave an example when you started of that sort of issue, I guess. My question is that, yes, it's quite clear medical spa wellness center, very straightforward, simple uh, description. You get a little more theoretical and esoteric, I think, on this as you go around the side and you know, if, because as you mentioned, it's the least visible one probably is the main entrance one. Correct. So if you're pulling, coming down Highland Avenue or going down Main, Main Street and you say, 
nature-based wellness. I guess that one works. I mean, I'm, I would, I, the science led beauty is maybe a less clear, but I think it's probably speaks more to your attitude than anything. So um, I think there is something to say about the brand voice of the interest without shoving these things down people's throats yeah. a little bit where when you are parked and you know you're going into a medical spa or a wellness center, it is right there. So I appreciate you understanding the idea behind the brand and I'm all for Deborah's um, suggestion about potentially thinking about any lettering, but the light boxes are gone. We've never liked them in the first place. No, Deborah, any more? Yeah, thoughts? no, I think we've said enough. Yeah, I, again, I'm, I question the wording, but it's the scale is fine. And, and Bob, we did actually did, a, Steve and I did a study or looked up a study a few years ago because the uh, Episcopal Church had three inch letters and we were like, is that, are they gonna be big enough? Can people really see what they, because I had the hours and the service times. And we found that, you know, Steve did some research and said, you know, it's about 75 to 80 feet. Those are pretty visible. So that's I, the that shown, so. Well, I am not an expert, but I have conviction in my opinions. Yep. And I disagree with the, the fact of, I don't disagree with the fact of the height of the ladders. It's the fact that people are moving cars. Yep. Well, is there any objection to, uh, other than we have some, reservations about maybe what they say or the scale is, um, but do they, is there any uh, move to remove those and just have the elite logo on all the street ones or are we comfortable letting her take a stab at getting that visibility and that message out in that way? No objections. Okay. Yeah, I'm okay with Okay, so I would take a motion to approve. Move to approve. Wait, 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 wait. Nope. Move to approve this, the awning submission with the graphics as shown, uh, the, but the requirement that the cabinet light boxes and associated wiring and conduit be removed and the brick be repaired behind. I'll take that motion. So moved. Second. All right. I'll um, come to the vote. Robert Dermody. Aye. Deborah Robinson. Aye. And the chair votes aye. All right. Well, thank you for working. Thank you. That thank you, us. members. Thank you, Joel. Thank, thank you, you very Joelle. much. Appreciate your time. We'll talk tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Good night. Good night, all. Good night. Good night. And the next item on the agenda is Needham High School. Mr. Seacott, nice to see you. Thanks for having me tonight. Thanks for having me back after uh, an extended time from my first visit with you. Yeah. I think it was May of 19 where we started this conversation. So I appreciate your patience. Yeah, could you uh, give us a quick background again on these two signs? And... Sure, we're looking for two signs to make clear the Needham High School location for those who may be less familiar with it, uh, visitors in particular. One is a larger uh, granite sign that would sit in the grassy area right by our entrance off of Webster Street. Uh, it's a, a lower sitting eight by four foot sign that says Needham High School, um, eight inch letters, and then um, established 1865. Uh, I believe those are three inch letters, but I can confirm that. Uh, that would be the one that would, uh, again, for most visitors, make it very clear where they're, they're headed. The second one is on the Admiral Gracie portion of the building, on the, what's now the back side, the former front side of the building. Uh, there's a bus loop um, right by our, our main entrance that has a, an old a rotting wooden sign. And so there's a, a, another granite sign that would uh, sit a little bit differently, a little higher off the ground, that would say Needham High School there. Um, and also indicate the main entrance, uh, which is near that, that portion for those who are coming from that end. And that, that tends to be some visitors who come up that side, but also visitors who are coming for sporting events or other performances who come into the, the parking lot area. Neither of them would have lights on them. They're just granite signs that sit as is. Okay. Uh... 
why don't we start with some questions and discussion? Where am I let's go. Uh, Deborah, you want to? Do you have any questions, comments on? Um, oh, I was looking for where it shows exactly where they're sitting on the site. Is that scrolling down? Way to go, way to the end. The the town engineer's office put together some graphics. So the only thing that I would ask the board to consider is uh, my understanding is the the code has the sign sitting 15 feet off the street line. Um, I actually think the Webster Street sign would work better, serve its purpose more effectively if it were closer to the street. As you're driving down Webster Street with the high school on the right, uh, the uh, neighbor right adjacent, adjacent to the high school has some large trees that block the high school until you're really close to it. And this, um, the turn can come up quickly for those who are coming to the high school, particularly for the first time. So being a little closer to the street would actually allow for clearer visibility. And since that is an entrance only, it wouldn't interfere with line of sight if someone were exiting because they wouldn't exit from that location at all. Yeah, so if that were a possibility, I, I think we would appreciate having it a little closer to the street. Otherwise- We can, it'd be we can a, comment on that, but the uh, billing inspector actually enforces that aspect of the thing. So he would evaluate that with you and then make a determination. But uh, I, you know, I understand that it's as an entrance only, it does, uh, kind of preclude the, the main requirement for why that part mm -hmm. of that, why that's in the bylaw. Um, Would that mean uh, coming back to this board or simply working with the inspector? No, no, we'll we'll go through, we'll we'll figure something out tonight, oh. and then if there are other questions, he may ask you to come back. But I, it's not an issue that we will waive. But he, you know, or we can, we can't waive it, but we can recommend that okay. we understand the situation. So All right, I appreciate that. There, there are situ there's there's circumstances that would allow that to be moved closer. So Deborah, other, you have other? I mean, <laughs> I think they're just very unattractive <laughs> uh, signs. I think they look sort of like tombstones. I think, and I think being all granite just the material and the shape don't really, it just doesn't work for me. Um, I concur, by the way. I mean, those all caps look kind of funny, like some just little gesture of like historic elements. I, I don't know. I don't know how, how much thought was put into this, but um, who, who did design this for you, Aaron? Uh, the original idea began with students who um, thought the, the lack of a sign was, was uh, an issue. A couple of graduating classes um, going back, I think, eight years now, started giving some funds toward it. So the, the makeup and the ultimate design has had some influence from student feedback. And then as we've had the final funds to be able to push forward, uh, a range of folks um, involved in the school, me included, wanted to uh, or, or in, were involved in the ultimate design for it. I think the the real goal was um, a classic look and something that had some staying power and wasn't uh, um, trying to be speaking to a particular age now or otherwise. Um, I know some some folks who weighed in on the the ultimate design have looked at other schools who have similar designs and the, the full granite and the kind of clean classic uh, cut of the, the letters is really what I think a lot of people were drawn to. So I'm, I'm sorry that you weren't on that list. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I like the simplicity. I, I just, uh, to be particular that I think the letter style on, I, mean, I think the smaller sign is works a little better Mm -hmm. It's a little, you know, I think the granite design's a little heavy handed, but not, you know, yeah, not, a, you know, I don't know. I think it's a, it looks like a standard sort of package for that company. And uh, rather than that, it was kind of thought out about where this is going to be. This is just how they do this sign. And then on the, the bigger, larger sign on the street, uh, I just feel like the the letter style is just a little heavy handed, and uh, you know it's not as elegant, say, as the one that's up in the traffic circle on Admiral Gracie. Mm -hmm. 
And then, but again, the, the knowing that the primary purpose is visibility, we wanted yeah. to make sure that the location and, and what it was actually reading was very clear for someone who was driving by. Yeah. Mark, uh, can I, yeah, can I jump in here? Mm -hmm. As I need a uh, high grad. Yeah, do, do I have to disclose that? I'm a proud <laughs> alum. We won't ask for your graduation year. Bingo. <laughs> That's the right answer. All right, nice to meet you, Aaron. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'd love a great sign for the high school. You know, I still live in town. Um, so uh, are the letters, um, uh, what's the word? Um, carved. Yes, carved they're out? engraved. They're yes, engraved. they're engraved. Uh, but there'd be no other highlighting, like a gold filigree around each letter or anything like that? That was not part of the plan, no. Yeah, okay. Um, little concerned about the black and maybe that was recommended for visibility against the gray. Um, Cause if it's just gray and gray, it's really difficult to read. Mm -hmm. um, and then here's another question. The first thing that caught me is this company is all the way down in Georgia. Um, do they have a home office near here? I mean, can we get a sign a little closer to home? Uh, because of the cost, we had to go out to bid. So we had to oh, go okay. through the bidding process. Fine. Fine. That's the answer then. Um, but, I, gosh, I hope you're not paying for shipping. Um, it's so all part of the bid, and they were they were a well priced. Uh, all right. Um, I like the sort of the monumentalness of it. It's uh, my comment earlier. I, I didn't mean to be disparaging, other than the, it's the graphic that I have the issue with. I like the monumentality. I like the material. Um, it's clean. You probably know. You've heard me all night. That's a big thing with me. Um, but uh, just the black letters. And upper and low, I don't know. I just, uh, I mean, it will work, you know, uh, but it just, uh, I wish there was just a little more. I would argue the old wooden sign has more character in some ways, maybe because it's weathered and it's, but it's, it's got a shape, it's got a color, it's got, you know, um, texture. I think there's even a logo maybe or something I saw. Um, yeah, the town logo. Yeah. So not that I, I want that on there, but. Even just, you know, uh, like a little, I don't know what you call it, but just some kind of a graphic. Just um, some scroll work or line. Yeah, or scroll or something. This is an academic institution. Um, you know, I, I don't know what we can do at this point either. And I, I do thank the people who put their efforts into this. But um, yeah, my, my one concern, I, and I, I appreciate this feedback, I really do. Uh, my one concern is knowing that this is the, the product of the bid process. Um, I don't know what flexibility we'll have to adjust the, the expectations of the bid at this stage. Uh, well, yeah, I, th I think there was some a little bit of a mix up when we first started talking with all of you about this was that, you know, our suggestion was to do a design yourselves somehow mm -hmm. and not have the company that's manufacturing it design it and bid it. But I, you, you were, I know that the concern was that it would have to be bid on. And so that you could, that it basically came as a, a turnkey. You must say they'll design and build it for you, but it doesn't, allow, it didn't really allow us to give you this kind of design feedback yeah. point when it was not all cast in stone, as they say. Well, and as, as I've sat through the, the other portions of this meeting, I recognize that um, you've saved the worst for last. There was a, a level of expertise in each of the other sign conversations that I'm not bringing to this discussion, and I apologize for that. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I, I recognize we're a little limited with with what I'm bringing to the table and and where my background really really is, frankly. Well, but I'm I'm you know as the the face of this and the the, the the emissary in this case, I'm very happy to bring whatever feedback back to either the the, the company or to others who are involved in the process to see what adjustments we could make if you think there's something that you really would like to, to push for. Yeah, I think I'd like to continue this. Just I realize that this has been dragging along for all of you for a while, but I mean, I would make suggestions like remove, especially on the, the Admiral Gracie one, just remove those caps and have the posts have a slight, they make posts with just a point that come to a point and that they just, there's four sides shaved. It's a hip roof on there. It's basically do the cap shape, but at the top of the post. And then they wouldn't have that sort of heavy handed piece. And I think the panel would sit more comfortably in there. It looks like it's a little small compared. And then just, uh, is there another letter style that 
starts to work on the back and are there any additional graphics or e even simply a carved horizontal line top and bottom sometimes sort of give a little extra life to these things uh, or do they have a, sh a, a panel that has a slight arc to it that they could replace this rectangular one with I mean if mm -hmm. If you could just have one conversation with them about kind of those ideas, the panel shape, different letter style in the back, any additional sort of graphic items that stay within their, your budget that you've agreed to with them. Um, and then you can come back and say, no, this is what they did and that's what we would get or, and we can kind of move ahead from there. I, I wonder what the other committee members think. Yeah, I have a couple of quick questions, Mark. I, and I agree with Mark's comments right there. I think even some, I think it's fair to ask the questions. Um, sorry to delay, but it's been this long already. And this is a sign that's gonna be here long after all of us, hopefully mm -hmm. so. Um, let's, uh, let's get it right. Um, oh, so the, the letter, uh, Mark, you mentioned on the back, is there two sides to these signs? They're both two sided. The okay. Webster Street is two sided, so it's visible from right. both directions. All right, and the Admiral Gracie. Admiral Gracie is just one one direction. Yeah. Okay. Um, it sits so. I mean, as you may recall from the wooden uh, sign, it sits so that it faces down Admiral Gracie, so that as you're right. driving up it, you see it. Um, I find the letter stroke on the Webster Street sign to be really fat, and I find the letter stroke on the Gracie side to be really thin. And that, that might be a question to work with your um, contractor there. That could be hopefully a minor change. You know, they just, they get out a different drill size. Um, you know, it doesn't change it. Definitely agree with Mark's comments of the Admiral Gracie, the, uh, those big caps. I think that should be an easy fix too with the, with the uh, company. Um, so that, yeah. Would it be any help if I just made some notes on these drawings and sent them back to you? That'd be very helpful, yes. Okay. Can, can I ask, um, you know, not really knowing exactly where we are um, in the process, are, are the suggestions that you're providing ultimately deal breakers or is this, uh, uh, if it ended up being as presented, would that be a, a disappointing but acceptable design in the end if some of what you're suggesting can't be incorporated? Well, we hate I to could never that approve right this. Now. <laughs> But As another Needham High graduate. <laughs> All right. Um, I, let's think positively. I, I'd like to hear what their response is um, from you. You know, um, it's just you know. I don't know, Mark. How do you feel about it? I, I share your concern that it's going to be there for a long time. I think we should make a little bit more of an effort and see if there's something that we can do. If it, if it throws it all haywire, we'll have that discussion. Um, you know, we're a pretty flexible board historically, but um, uh, I know I would be hearing things from people if, if this is what we put up at this point. And I have one more suggestion. And I think uh, if Mark can do those sketches, I think that'll be really helpful for you, Aaron. Mm -hmm. And my suggestion would be to go back in the process as allowed and ask a bunch of questions in the hopes that one or two of them hit because if you just go back and ask one thing and they say, no, we can't do that, we're right back in the same place. So, you know, different letter stroke, maybe um, even just a slight arc to the top of the sign panel, get rid of the caps, maybe another engrave, you know, line at the top or something with a dot in the middle, like something so for some visual relief, um, something to that effect, I think would help. I'm not sure about it at the bottom because there's the the mm -hmm. established and you know that would offset yeah, it. I think. I like that. Um, and I, that that's my opinion. This is helpful. Appreciate it. I hope so. Okay, so we'll continue. Um, let you get some progress in this, and just let us know when you're ready to come back in, and you'll get to the first on the agenda. You won't have to sit through the evening. I appreciate that, and I promise not to take another year before we're ready to come back to you. So. <laughs> Your schedule is your schedule. I understand these things. Now well, we, we want to get it right. Well, and I can't even, I, I, you know, I would love to own it if it was that simple, but it's, you know, layers of complexity, including a COVID thrown in the midst of all this. So, but we, we appreciate your, your support and your patience with all this. Well, right. thanks so for I your patience. I take a motion to continue this to a time uns uncertain. So moved. Second. All right. Uh, with the vote, Robert Dermody. Aye. Deborah Robinson. Aye. Mark Lucing votes aye.
Thanks, Aaron. Okay, thank you, everyone. Have thank a good you, day. Aaron. Okay, the next item is to approve the minutes of November 2nd. I move we approve the minutes of November 2nd. Did Deborah leave? No. No, oh, second, sorry. So the vote, uh, Robert Dermody? Uh, aye. Deborah Robinson? Aye. Mark Lusing votes aye. Uh, and I take a motion to adjourn. Is there any other discussion items anyone has? Alisa? I would just um, ask you to uh, about the proposed meeting schedule for 2021 that I sent you. I have that. Um, yep. I didn't put it on the agenda because I didn't know where you were at with it. So, but I wanted to just- I'll get that back to you this plant week. Plant the seed again. Yep, no, I'll get that this week. Thank you. How about when we meet just once next year? Do it <laughs> once. We'll have one big meeting. <laughs> We could think about a three week slide because my wife's like, you're meeting again? Didn't you just meet? You know, when we have three meetings of two weeks apart, it feels like a lot. All right, we'll call that the Adrian Amendment. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I would take a motion to adjourn. Uh, yes, I say we adjourn. Second. Okay, the vote is Robert Dermody. I will vote in favor. Trevor Robinson. Aye. And the chair is aye. So we Thank are you, going. Lisa and Raina, and you're 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 very patient to listen to us all night. You actually make it very um, <laughs> very enjoyable. I gotta oh. say, I, I love Deborah's remark. It looks like a gravestone because when I it saw is. that when I saw that 